Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be double top plating these walls here. We're just going to talk about some important things to keep in mind and what we're trying to achieve when we're double top plating. Okay, so when we're double top plating, the goal of it is to lock everything together. Right here you can see we have a, a break in our plate and it's spread a little bit. So when we double top plate, we want to tie this in together real well, nailed it on both sides. We want to stop it here so that we can tie this wall into here. That makes your walls really sturdy. So at the end of this wall, we have a height change. So our wall steps up two feet. So we're just going to pull right off the end of this wall and measure over to this line here that lines up with our two by four. Now we're, gonna, we're only going to go 46 and three quarters so that we're short of this line because we want to be able to pull this together when we nail it and we want to be able to overlap this without butting into it. It's okay if there's a gap on each side of your overlaps. It's not, not an issue. The important part is keeping your first top plate the exact length. You don't want any gaps between them because that's going to throw your walls out of plumb. So we got 46 and 3 quarter and if I butt my tape into this corner over here and I run it all the way to the end, we have 50 and 7 sixteenths. So that, the reason I butted my tape into that wall is so that that plate can run along as well. So I'll that plate run along, this plate run along, and then this plate will stop short here. Right here, we're running that plate long to tie in here and over to here. So we'll just butt our tape between these two, and we'll go an eighth short, 45 and 3 eighths. Now we'll cut these boards and put them up. We got our board. Now we're going to flush it up on the end here because the wall steps up. Now when you're nailing your top plates on, the boards aren't always the same width, but you want them to be flush. So you just balance it if on each side just feel it with your fingers, get it balanced, and then put two nails in. We pounded our seam together here, so our wall stays the same length. We're going to put two nails on each side of the seam so that it holds it together there. So you can see I only put two nails above the studs. Right here it's just offset because the plate splits here. The reason we nail above the studs when we're putting on our double top plates is so that when the electricians and plumbers drill through this, they don't have to worry about hitting a nail. So that's an important part. Right here, we don't have a double top plate tying us into this taller wall. So we'll probably put a structural screw through this seam. Anywhere your walls step up, you want a structural screw to act as your double top plate tying it in together real well. So here on our overlap, where we have this one tying it into this wall on this T here. We want to make sure that our plates are tight before we nail this. You always want your first top plates very tight. That's a very important part. Makes framing a lot easier. So here I'll flush it up. Put two nails in. And then on this T here, for a 2 by 4 we're going to do three nails. Any more than that and the board's going to crack out and it's going to be worthless to tie it in. So three nails on a 2x4 and on a 2x6 overlap we're going to do five nails. Over here we have a 2x6 plumbing wall next to our 2x4 wall. So we're going to run our plates all the way from that far end so we overlap that corner. We're going to run it all the way to the end of this 2x6 wall to tie it in. Make sure this is tight where it needs to be. 101 and a quarter. Now, when you're working with another guy, you usually have one guy up here measuring, calling out measurements, and the other guy is passing them boards back, cutting and passing boards, so that he can just stay up here nailing. Sometimes people will walk the walls. Um, Definitely not recommended for safety purposes, but it is a lot faster. 
Now, when you're nailing two by six studs into the top plate, you use three nails. That's because it's usually taking more force. That whole stud is taking the force of wind or people bumping into the wall. So you wanna use three nails. But when you're on the top plate, you only have to use two. There's not as much force applied to this connection. It's very short. Over here on the exterior, you can see we notched our double top plate so that we can overlap our interior walls into it. We'll show you how to do that next. We're gonna put three nails on the two by six, making sure it's flush, and two on the two by four. Okay, right here, we haven't notched into our exterior yet. And we've sheeted up the outside of our truss heels on this one. So this is a trickier cut, but we'll show you guys how we do it. So we wanna go a little bit wide so that we don't have to fight our board getting in there. A 16th or an eighth on each side is fine. And then we only go about a two inch overlap just to keep the integrity of the exterior plate. Um, some, some people don't even tie in their exterior walls. So we'll set our saw to an inch and a half so we don't cut into this first top plate. Now this next cut is called a plunge cut and it can be dangerous, so you have to be very careful. But the trick with it is never, ever pull your saw back. It's gonna, the way the saw blade spins, it's gonna grab it and pull the saw back. So you wanna line it up, and as you push your saw in, you keep going forward. Easy. Now we can get our measurement and nail it on. 95 and 3 /8. So when you're picking boards for double top plating, you want relatively straight boards because you don't want to have to bend it and flush it up and then it just bows your wall. You want it to straighten out your wall. The only exception to that is if your top plate, your first top plate, is already really crowned. Then you wanna find another crown board and put it crowning the opposite way so that when you flush it up, it straightens out your wall. When you're putting on boards and they don't line up, there's two ways to get them to line up. First one is to work way ahead of where you nailed. Like you can work way down the wall just to get that lever to get it on the right track. The second way, more so for two by sixes, is to just use a clamp to angle it over and clamp it flush. So right here, our plates are not flushed up. It's overhanging on this side and inset here. We don't want this. We want it to be very flush. You can see it's about almost an eighth of a gap between our first top plate and our second top plate. So we're gonna clamp it over. There you can see it's flush. The other trick to getting them over is to put a nail in of your inset top plate. So now you can take your hammer and use it as a pry bar to bend this over. Get it flush, nail it off. You can pull this nail out or set it, it doesn't matter. Now another way of getting your measurements for your top plates is a really cool trick that up above me, we know we have to run long to overlap this wall here. And we know we're running short here because of our height change again. So we just pull a measurement at the bottom of our plates. We got 50 and a half. So since our bottom plates and our top plates are the same measurement, this trick usually works on everything. We could have done our whole walls that we just did pulling our measurements if the, at the bottom. As long as we're looking up to see where we wanna overlap, we can pull every measurement for our top plates at the bottom without getting on a ladder. For example, 
you can see up here we have a plate going inside to inside. So we'd measure at the bottom of our walls. We have 45 and a half. So we can take a little bit off and go 45 and 3 eighths or even 45 and 5 sixteenths. And then we know that plate will fit in right up there. This trick only works if you're taking your time and plumbing your walls really well so that whatever is at the bottom continues up to the top because everything's plumb and parallel. If you guys are getting any value out of this video, please consider subscribing because we're doing a video about every skill it takes to frame a house. We'll show you one last trick to use nails for. This is not a good example to show the trick on, but we'll show it here just because this is what we got. So sometimes if you have a wall that's either a T or a corner, you have a gap here that's like really big and it's hard to get close. So what you can do is, is put a nail near the end of your board about an inch in and then bend it over and this allows you to pry your plate in like I said it's not a good example but this gives you leverage to pull this wall into the other wall to get your plates tight here we got our plate gap out so we should be good to nail it then you can just pop this nail out now when you have a seam in your first top plate the code is to get your next break of your double top plate at least two feet past your seam. So we do our best, especially on exterior walls, to get a long double top plate and two feet past the seam. Now, when you break your double top plate, you don't have to, but we try and break it on a stud. That increases the strength of the house and it allows us to put our nails near the stud so that they can continue to drill up without hitting nails. This isn't too hard because your studs are 16 on center. So if you can cut your first plate to end on a stud, then your second plate, you can just put a 16 foot uncut board up there and it'll be real close to the stud on the other side. Here's an example of an exterior corner. We have three nails right at the end of our plate and we have five nails on the overlap. Then we have three nails at the end of this plate as well. Then two on, two nails from there. So that's how you double top plate your walls after they're stood. If you wanna see how to double top plate your walls on the ground when you're building them, so that when you stand them up, they all just slide in and lock together, click here to watch our video about marking plates and laying out. Remember, when you're double top plating, you're going for tying everything together so it's super strong, nailing on top of your studs, and flushing up each side of the board so that the drywall is smooth right up the wall. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel because we're doing an in-depth video about every skill it takes to frame a house.